Thanks for coming over to this Amadeus. And in today's Alun video, I want to talk about breaking down Alun units. So uh, just as an example, I definitely want you guys to drop comments down below, insights, thought processes that you have when you're looking at the different Aloons. But I've got a lot of questions about which units to build. And, and I'll be honest, man, I think we're all fresh to the game at this point, but there are a couple of units that are really starting to shine. So first and foremost, let's take a look at how we're assessing these Aloons. So what we want to do is we want to uh, I'm going to click that little hamburger up at the top, a right hand corner, and then we want to go over here and we want to select index. In the index, we're going to choose Aloons. There's a lot of maneuvering and moving through the screens in Aloon that you got to get comfortable with and you got to get used to. Um, I am still struggling. <laughs> I watch people all the time struggling to get from screen to screen and, and I feel like the utmost sympathy for them because it's definitely something I struggle with. But um, once you kind of got it down, it's a little bit easier. So I was looking at what champions I wanted to build, reading comments, and, and as an example, like everybody's recommending Chloe Van. So if we jump over here and select Chloe Van, we'll come right over here to uh, to really the Alune Index, the, the spot where we're going to look at all of the stuff for these champions. So down here in the left-hand corner, we've talked about it a little bit, but you can look at all of their all of their emotes and this is great for doing videos by the way because this gives me all my thumbnails um, and then like let's see let's see evasion slick your tumble looks rough looks like you're taking a nap there and then we can actually click uh, the training center and we can actually look to see what these attacks look like so I'll be honest when I was working on uh, who to build next and I was looking at this stuff uh, man I saw this second skill of Chloe's just getting talked about all the time before I built her. And I was like, well, what does it do? Well, you know, as you can see, that champion is paralyzed. So at level six, what this does is it gives you up to 100% chance to paralyze your foe for three turns. Now, when someone's paralyzed, every attack crits. So you can do massive amounts of damage to them. So we'll just do this basic attack. Boom. Crit like no crit on this test champion and it's 100 percent crit every time and that's phenomenal and i will tell you that that's the reason people love using her in boss raids so much so what i want to do is i wanted to kind of look at that like okay well let's let's look at her okay first and foremost chloe van's an epic right she needs to have her second skill this um this uh shockwave device drop fully maxed in order for that skill to be consistent, right? Now, of course, you can go and do her ultimate. Her ultimate evidently does insane amounts of damage too when you get her on a damage build. But what you gotta look at is, is really what this is being used for is to lock bosses down. So we definitely want to make sure that we have her skilled up. So first thing I thought in my head was like, hey, how many epic books do I have? I have five, fantastic. We can get her fully skilled up. I can use her. And then I had to think about like, what kind of gear sets do we want to put on her? Now, here's a bit of confusion that I know a lot of people ran into um, because there is a mistranslation in the gear itself. So when you look at um, the full moon gear, right down here where it says three piece, it says 25% chance to remove a, a debuff. That should actually say t a plus 25% chance to add a debuff or something along those lines. It says one thing in Korean, it says one thing in English, it's a mistranslation. Gameville knows, K Gaming brought it to their attention last week when he went to visit them. He let everybody in the community know that he, he's talked to them and, and they're looking into it to get that language fixed soon. So the big thing is, is just realizing like that's a plus 25% chance to land a debuff. Paralysis is a debuff. So you want to gear with at least three pieces of this full moon gear to get that benefit or that effect. That's killer. No, that's killer information to know. So when I looked at her, I was like, oh, okay, so I know what to gear. I got gear for her. I, I, I got skill books for her. Like, I should totally build her. And then it's just like, oh, but I didn't pull her. Because you can get her in fusions. You can get her through your summons. But you can also get her through adventure in hard stage two. She's one of the affinity champs that you can get. So that's what I ended up doing. I ended up grinding her out and getting her this way. Now... That's tougher because she comes as three stars. So you gotta have a lot of DPS seeds available in order to get her up to six. 
So I think it's 16 that you need because she's an epic. So I still have one or two more days. I, no, two days. I have two days left that I still have to do to get her up to six star, right? So if we look at mine, and I'll show you mine. She's hiding on me because that's how it works when you're doing a video. Okay, here she is. So as you can see, I put the full moon on her. Um, and then I fully skilled up her, her skill six. Skill six, it's a level six, totally skilled up. Um, but um, if I want to, if I want to evolve her, come on. I'm going to need four more, right? No, I'm going to need six more. I'm going to need six more. So I got two more days before I can get her up to six stars. So, um, oh man, she needed, uh, she needed 24, I think. Because I think it was six, eight, ten. So, yeah, it's 24 seeds you need if you're going to bring her up from, from, uh, from a, a three star. Man, that's a lot of seeds. It's rough. I appreciate the limitation on seeds though, because that way you can't, you really can't pull that far ahead with those seeds. But it also makes it super important to know who you want to build ahead of time, just from a resource management standpoint. Now, the other side of this is when I decided to build her, I wanted to look at uh, how we're going to gem her, right? So um, I, I just learned this. I was confused. I thought about this the wrong way. I thought the bonus from the gems, so if you look at like the blue gem, it says increase magic damage of skills by 2.5%. I thought that meant 2.5% for all skills, but it's been explained that that is not actually how it happens. It's for the specific skill that it is gemmed into. So if you put this into, um, let's say, CB Mikado Beam, then that's going to increase just the beam's uh, magic damage. Nothing, Nobody else is just that one. And in fact... If you were to do, say, in this particular instance, blue, blue, violet, it gives you the restores one, restore one soul chance. I'll be honest. I think that you got to look at how you're going to use your champ when you're gemming them. So for me, I would not be following these set guidelines. I would not be looking for these set bonuses. They're sweet. Don't get me wrong. But on that first skill, that's not what we want to use. It's that second skill, shockwave device drop, that we want to use. So... For me, I'm thinking that on Shockwave Device Drop, I actually want to put in uh, some Indigos, right? I want to put in, hopefully, six-star Indigos into this champ so there's a better chance of landing that Paralysis debuff. And I want to get to that skill as quickly as possible. So on Bomb Drop, I'm actually going to put in some of these uh, Violet Gems so that after I use that bomb drop my attack speed goes up and it's more likely for me to move forward into the attack lineup so that i can be uh using my second skill more often now i i will tell you i told you that this mikado beam once it's fully skilled up and you got some attack uh crit power um attack substats in your gear it does a lot of damage um don't forget accuracy in there you know to avoid evades but really, the damage is amazing. So in this particular one, all the way to the top, we're gonna go. We're gonna go with some blues, and we're gonna drop. I, I personally, I'm gonna drop three blues into this Mikado beam so that I can get as much DPS out of her as possible. Because on a team that's really focused on control, where she's the star player, she there, you're gonna have very little room for a DPS champion. So um, that's Chloe Van by herself. But I also want to talk about a couple of champions that have popped up as just amazing um, uh, units to go along with her, right? So if she's the spine, we gotta talk about everybody else that's kinda, kinda keeping her afloat. So first and foremost, if you didn't know, bosses, after you apply a debuff a couple of times, they get something called tolerance. And tolerance makes it harder for you to apply your debuff. So you got to find these champions that, that do something about that. One of the best champions in the game is Mikazuki. And you can see that on her passive, when she attacks, she reduces a random tolerance effect by one level. So she's if she's attacking, she's constantly bringing it down. So that makes her super useful for anybody that adds debuff, but especially for a champion that's so critical, um, like Chloe Van. She's a, she's a great partner. Another unit that is super great that goes along with Chloe Van is um, 
where are you? There you are. Is uh, Gaunsari. Now, Gaunsari has a, also has a um, passive. And his passive actually reduces resistance by 10%. Right? So, um, that's for any target with an amulet. Nice to know, though, is that if you look at his first skill, it adds a bomb amulet. Right? So, it's going to get that 10% debuff on it. So, now it's even easier. So, now think about it. We're doing those gems. We're doing the full moon gear. And now we're doing uh, an amulet onto that, onto that boss. So, that chance of them resisting is really, really low. Especially if you can get uh, Mikazuki in there to reduce the tolerance. That's amazing. But, that's not, that's not the last spot. There's another champion that you can put in there for DPS that can really help... Um, that can really help out, especially if you're running into a situation where um, uh, where you can't get that paralysis landed after a while, and that's Kunhar. Now Kunhar has an ultimate skill that when it's f let's look at it fully maxed up. When it's fully maxed up, will stun for three turns, right? And um, if you get crits because of his passives, it's more likely to land. And that's great because what do you get when you're in paralysis? You get 100% crit rate. So he can, um, you have Chloe Van go ahead and get out there, and she goes ahead and lays the paralysis down. And then right before it expires, you can have Kunhar come in, and he can drop a three-turn stun. And then while that stun's in place, you can go ahead and use Chloe Van to try and get the uh, get the boss reparalyzed. And... <laughs> With Kunhar, if you need more than three turns to do that, that's okay. Because his second skill, Shield Throw, not only applies damage because it drops bleeding on the, the boss, but he also ups the duration of existing debuffs um, for stun and bleed. So he, if he's given the opportunity to go enough, he's just going to go ahead and keep all of those buffs up there so that that stun stays on the boss and you can just whittle him down until you can get that paralysis back on him and then you can like start using those big skills again but i mean these are just champs that go along with uh chloe van and you can start to see some of those synergies like backbones of boss uh teams and that's kind of why so when we're looking at uh chloe van now that we kind of understand who she works who she works well with why are we going here we're not farming right now i wish i was farming right now i need to Need to I need to get that count. Sorry, um, so I can drop some ambulance on some cats and then blow bosses' faces up because that's what I really enjoy doing. <laughs> um, but if we look at if we look at like team comps, um, you can really start to see where you can cycle through the skills, where you can give yourself um, a lot of room to really because you're manual in all these bosses right now. You can really slow down these bosses so that you you know there's no panic. It's just, it's a process, man. It's just like this step, then this step, then this step. Stun, or paralysis, stun, crit, 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 crit. Do your damage, do your heals, get your way, way going to refresh your skills. I mean, it's just, it's a great, beautiful synergy that the team's working with. And it works really, really well on Trent and Proto T3. Now, Chloe Van can be used in the other raids, but right, or the other boss dungeons. But I'll tell you what, I really think she shines and Trent and Proto T3, um, and especially for early game. I mean, you can't go wrong by building her up, skilling her up, putting some gems into her, and just letting loose, especially if you have the opportunity to do to use uh, Kunhar, Gansari, or Mikazuka. I mean, just, I mean, it's just a great synergy. So that's kind of what I wanted to cover as far as, as far as she goes, because I thought it was really important, like when we're looking at breaking down champions moving forward, that we can all use a champion to like kind of like set the guidelines, right? So I want to do the same type of thing for other Aloons, like where do you get them? How do you gear them? Uh, how do you gem them? Uh, what teams are they good on? Where can you use them? Like those five big questions I want to answer in every video that I do about an Aloon, but I want to open it up to you guys to make sure I didn't miss anything. Or if I misspoke or, or something was wrong about like this particular champion or something you want to see about a champion in the future, go ahead and drop it in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching the videos. Have a great day. Bye.